welcome to everyone as today we celebrate the ascension of our Lord Jesus into heaven. And we ask the Lord to prepare our hearts as we celebrate these sacred mysteries, but as we open them to the Lord who continues to send forth his spirit among us, that where our God is one day we too might be. And so we rejoice in the Lord Jesus who has, through his death, has given us life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we ask God's pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, help us to follow you more closely. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Lord, mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, give us joy at your ascension. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Amen. have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have opened the gates to paradise. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and one day bring us to everlasting life. Amen. us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son in our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, 
He enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are his riches of glory, and his inheritance among the holy ones. And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe? In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, 
the fullness of one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus The Ascension for us is quite a beautiful feast because we are called now to, in a sense, allow the ball to be in our court. Now the difficulty with that is that as Jesus goes before the disciples into the heavens, we know that they're yet afraid of that. As he tells them, go now and make disciples of all, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit because we know that the onus now becomes real for the disciples and they're so much afraid. We might remember uh, sometimes years ago when I think uh, the track stars were running the the great uh, baton around the arena and they had to pass it off. And okay, now you either have to grab that baton in a real tricky way to keep moving quickly, quickly without dropping it. So the disciples know that it could be a little difficult, that now the ball is in their court, now they have to hold on to the baton, now it's up to them to continue what Jesus began. And that doesn't seem too good because the power, as Jesus says, and the authority will be given to them, but they don't understand that. And so there's where Pentecost comes in. The resurrection, ascension, and then looking forward to Pentecost, to the hope that they will be empowered by the strength of the Spirit in their lives. And so, afraid at first to let go of the presence of Jesus from their lives physically, and yet not knowing what this Spirit will be about for them. What's it like when we have to let go of people who are close to us when they're either going away on a trip or they're moving permanently. We know what it means to let go of someone because things won't be the same in that relationship. And yet we have the hope that that relationship will be sustained in a new way. And that's what we're about today as we recognize where Jesus goes, we hope one day to follow because we are those followers and we're becoming like the disciples more like the teacher. And so now the teacher says, okay, the ball's in your hands. Now you run with this. Now you have heard my word, the word, the presence of God among you. Now allow that word to become real in the lives of others. 
doesn't seem too easy when we hear that. And yet, it's up to us to trust. Trust not in ourselves, but in those gifts that God will give us continually through his spirit. And so we're reminded today of how beautifully St. Paul, to his Ephesian community, reminds him of the riches that is our inheritance, that we belong to the great life to which God has given us in Jesus. And in our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, as Jesus is taken up into heaven, that it is the Holy Spirit that will come into our lives. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so these days leading up to Pentecost, we pray for ourselves. We pray that we can do what God calls us to do. And maybe in a new way, what we yet need to be attentive to as God's Spirit comes into our lives. It's difficult to hear. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. But we trust that our own hearts and our own lives will be strengthened by the Spirit of Jesus, our risen and ascended Christ, who goes before us, that we who follow him may bring his presence in the midst of others. Pray, what is God asking us during these days ahead as we move toward Pentecost? What are we called to do as we go and teach all nations of God's presence? Or what do we do in the name of our God in the midst of our world? At home, those we're with day in and day out, those God sends us to in our workplaces, school not so easy these days because we're not together, but yet, how, Lord, are you calling me to make your presence real in the world? We're a little afraid, but Lord, with your strength, as we trust in you, you make all things happen in your name. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them, teaching others, to observe all that I commanded you, and behold, do not be afraid, for I am with you always until the end of the age. We now renew that faith as we proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now with confidence and trust in the spirit of Jesus, our risen and ascended Lord, we now offer our prayers of today. For Christians around the world, that they carry out Jesus' commission, 
to bring the gospel to all nations and peoples. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in elected office, may they seek wisdom and discernment in making decisions for the common good, especially during this current pandemic. Let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all impacted by the coronavirus, for those infected, their families and loved ones, those who care for them, and the scientific community which works to find relief, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle daily to provide their families for logic and common sense as we begin to experience the reopening of our communities, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to all that destroys life, for laws and attitudes that value human life, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for those who have died, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special needs and intentions, and for the intentions in our prayer parish prayer basket, let us pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord our God, hear now the prayers of your people who come before you with their needs. Strengthen us in in your life and continue to send your spirit to us. Be with those for whom we pray, in Jesus' name, he who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Amen. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, in honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant we that though this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the eternal realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended today to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with the paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the heart of the Lord unto the Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all of our bishops and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, Blessed Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her the peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion by Jesus I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot now receive you sacramentally come spiritually into my heart I embrace you as if you have already come and unite myself wholly to you never permit me to be separated from you amen Let us pray. 
Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. Amen. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was plainly seen by the disciples, so when he comes as judge, may he show you himself mercifully for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of this promise to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.